they've got the means and the manpower to execute a new league that will be better than the MPFL, then by all means, let it work. But are they going to get the backing of the government? Will they get the backing of FIFA as well? I mean, it's a long process. So many dots, to, um, so many I's to dot, so many T's to cross. So it's going to be a long process. It's going to be extremely difficult for them to execute this. So I'm looking forward to the best of us putting together a league that will be reputable, not only in Nigeria, but I mean to the world and Africa at large. Mm. If we're calling ourselves the African giants, we're meant to be the pace setters. In terms of the world of football, we should be number one and we should be leading the chase. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, I will hope that they come to a good understanding and we can move forward from there. Mm. All right, we spoke with Ibidonia, you know, an associate in the sports and entertainment law department, Petstone and Grace LP. She gave her own thoughts on this. Initially, when I heard about the league, I thought, why not? It's been a long time coming, and privately owned football clubs, I believe, have been sleeping on this for a while. I mean, the government does not seem like they're going to do anything to develop the league anytime soon, so we're stuck where we are. But, I mean, after careful consideration and after discussing with some people in the industry, I think the idea is uh, might be bound to fail. Uh, going by what the league proposes to do, and, and I, this is why I think so, and I, I believe that if they don't watch out for these little loopholes, you know, you know, it might be, it might fail. Firstly, they intend to name the league uh, Nigeria Private Investors Football League. Now, the truth is, you cannot have two national or Nigerian leagues in one country. So it's a fundamental error. And if they go ahead to put national or Nigerian behind their name, they probably won't be able to fly the league as much as they want to. Now, another problem has to do with the growth of the league or how they want the league to grow. Right? When the MPL broke away from the FA uh, about almost 30 years ago, I'm sure we all know about that, they, they, they succeeded. They were able to actually succeed doing this because they immediately secured a TV deal, which was worth millions of pounds. Now, they, they knew that it was all about commercializing football, and they realized that only broadcasting rights could actually sustain the league. Right? They also got the top clubs in the league then to break away with them, because most of the clubs were having issues with the FA at the time. They also got the government on their side to... to I mean, they, they got the, the government on their side you know, to support them, because... The uh, government also had a disagreement with the FA at the time. And all this they did before they commenced, right? And then, you know, it immediately became the highest footballing level in the UK. I'm talking about the EPL. But, but, for, the, but the, for the Nigeria Private Investors Football League, I mean, I'm not sure if, they, if they've been able to secure all this. Neither do I know if they would actually be able to secure this, you know, looking at the way the um, football in Nigeria is run like a fraternity. You know, for the, so I, I believe that for the MPIFL to be a success, they definitely need to get the support of the government from the onset. Right? They also need to get the support of the top clubs running, uh, currently playing in the league. But that might be you know, quite impossible because those top clubs are government-owned and they're supposed to be private investors for all league. Right? So now the solution to this is if the MPIFL, NPIFL, if they agree with the LMC to make that league, the highest footballing league in Nigeria. And so promotions from the MPFL will go to the MPIFL and relegations from the MPIFL will go to the MPFL. Now, except this, the league will I mean, probably just be another private league, but, you know, <laughs> on the higher scale. I mean, and, 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 and lastly, another thing they need to consider is, uh, as much as I'm on, very unhappy to say this, the government-owned clubs happen to be the pillars of football in Nigeria today. They're the only ones that can actually throw around that amount of money that we keep hearing in Nigerian football. And currently, they remain the only hope for professional footballers who will end up playing their entire career in Nigeria. I mean, we can see that most of these government-owned football clubs have been on for years. And the only thing sustaining them as it is today is government money. Some of these are private clubs keep coming and going. So, for instance, I have it on good authority, right, that one of the state-owned football clubs in, Nigeria, in the north they pay their players as much as 500,000 per month. That's about 200% plus times the amount of money that LMC even put as a minimum. While some of our private clubs, they struggle to even pay the minimum, which is 150,000. They struggle to pay that 150,000 to their top players. Right? So how, does, how, how do we expect the league to, to be sustained? Now, the solution here is if the government-owned football clubs 
you know, come together with a privately owned football club to form a solid partnership. They're supposed to have done that since 2015 when, you know, the LMC said government-owned football clubs should divest 50% of their equity. So if they come together to form a solid partnership, this, uh, you know, uh, and drive the league, I think this is the way uh, um, football can be sustained or this is the way we can record success in football for uh, um, government-owned clubs and, and, and privately-owned clubs.